The science is clear. A healthy gut microbiome with the good bacteria that help our bodies produce food is key to a healthy lifestyle. But now we're learning about the connection between your gut microbiome health and type 2 diabetes. Pendulum Glucose Control is the first and only medical probiotic that's designed to manage A1C and blood glucose levels through the health of your microbiome. Now, what I love about Pendulum Glucose Control is that it helps people with diabetes manage their condition naturally. Over time, people with type 2 diabetes lose the gut bacteria that help digest fiber and manage blood glucose levels. For those with type 2 diabetes, it can feel like an uphill battle to keep glucose and A1C levels where you need them. Diet and exercise are still important, but if you struggle to manage your levels with diet and exercise alone, your gut microbiome might need attention. Pendulum Glucose Control helps fill in the gaps by providing the first and only probiotic designed to manage blood glucose and A1C levels. With Pendulum, you can feel in control of your levels, not the other way around. Take control of your glucose levels today. Try Pendulum Glucose Control for 90 days. If you're not satisfied with your levels, you'll get your money back. Visit PendulumLife.com to find out more and use promo code RATCHET for 20% off your first bottle of membership. That's P-E-N-D-U-L-U-M-L-I-F-E.com. Promo code RATCHET. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn hip-hop storytelling with Nas or how to design your career with Elaine Welteroth. Now, I started taking master classes back in 2018. There was one with Aaron Sorkin about how to write for TV and another one with Shonda Rhimes. I loved those classes. I learned so much about how to write for TV. And my favorite part, there were no more than 15 minutes every class. I always had time to watch. This holiday, give one annual membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash ratchet today. That's masterclass.com slash ratchet. Terms apply. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Y'all, a terrible thing has occurred. I think I'm allergic to red wine. The last two times I've had red wine, I had two glasses the other night, 8.30 and another one, say like 9.15, 9.30. I wasn't like mainlining it. I had dinner and my stomach wasn't empty. Almost immediately, my head started to hurt. And I was like, why do I have a headache? Am I stressed about something? Did I not drink enough water? I remembered to eat, which is a thing for me. So I went to bed. I wake up the next morning with this massive hangover, but it was worse than a hangover. It was almost like what people describe migraines to be like. And I was like, where is this coming from? Because I didn't eat anything new. I didn't drink anything new. I cooked at home. So it wasn't like foreign food. It's stuff that I always eat. What is going on? Fast forward two days. I'm up late. I'm writing. I pour a glass of red wine. One glass. Same thing. My head starts to hurt immediately. I wake up the next day, didn't feel as bad as before. It wasn't like migraine level, but definitely a hangover like headache. And I was like, WTF, it's the wine. So now I'm scared to drink red wine. And what's the worst part? I used to drink white wine almost exclusively. This is what happened with the white wine. So that's why I started drinking red. I switched over like three years ago. So I can't drink white wine. I can't drink red wine. What is life? How do I live it? Like I was already thinking about getting back on the wagon for like almost three years. I want to say from like 2016 to maybe 2018, I didn't drink at all. No wine, no nothing. And before that, I'd cut out hard liquor for like a year. But 2018, I started drinking again in moderation and almost exclusively just wine, no hard liquor, except tequila when I'm out, except tequila when I'm on vacation or out with like my 28 year old cousin, because that's all she drinks and I'm trying to bond, whatever. And I like tequila. Let's keep it 100. So I was thinking about quitting again, but I was like, you know, I wanted to quit on my own terms, not be forced out because of allergies. Y'all, this is very ungood. I mean, life is still worth living, but how enjoyable will it be? I'm very upset about this. In other news. Oh, before we talk about anything else, 
the merchandise drop that I've been talking about happening forever in a day, it happened. Sunday, just before midnight, I unofficially dropped it. I put it up on the site. I posted a bunch of links in my IG stories. And I was like, when I get up in the morning, I'll do like some Beyonce-esque, like, you know, just drop it and be like, boom, here it is. I got enough stuff to last the entire winter season. This drop was supposed to take us up until February at least. I'll probably do the Don't Waste Your Pretty shirts again then. So I drop it in stories and go to bed. I woke up the next morning to like half the site sold out. And I was like, are you, wait, wait. So look, I'm not complaining. Thank you for your support. But y'all, y'all, literally, there was two tons of clothes. We're down to one ton. So I appreciate you. And I'll continue to ship out as fast as I can. The first 500 orders are already on their way to their new homes. Once I finish this podcast, I'll do another two drops to UPS. So another 750 or so today, and I'll keep churning them out as fast as I can. But first and foremost, thank you. Second, y'all, what we gonna do for the rest of winter? What we gonna do for the rest of winter? That said, if you are hearing the sound of my voice and you want merch from this drop, especially if you want any of the merch that's podcast green or white and gold, Pause this podcast, go to DemetriaLLucas.com and get your merch. Because I don't want to hear I was waiting for XYZ and then it all got sold out or my size is gone. I know for like the logo crews, I think there's mediums and two X's. That's it. Everything else is gone. The pink shut the fuck up is free. There's more of those, but those are moving fast too. So if you want a sweatshirt, a crew neck or a t-shirt, especially of one of those in your size, stop listening. Go to the site, get your merch, and then come back. We'll wait. Okay. In other news, good black news. Amon Shumpert. Is it Shumpert? Tiana Taylor husband. He just won Dancing with the Stars. I like Iman because I like Tiana. And the kids are really cute. And they seem like just a really happy, cute family. Like, she got a lot of personality, and the oldest daughter, like, she, she's pure personality. And Iman just be in there chilling. He just like to love his ladies, relax, mind his business, raise his children. He gives a lot of silence, which is a nice trait in a man, to be quite honest. I feel so bad calling this man Tayana Taylor's husband. He has a whole NBA career where he brings in good coin to support his family. He is a whole man with a whole identity, but I like her, so I like him. I'm just saying. He's a nice looking man too. And that's as far as I can say, because I feel like Tiana Taylor is a friend in my head, but I can't say anything more about her husband than he's a nice looking man. Cause I feel like that's like my friend and you can't be talking like, you know, about a friend's husband's, you know, attractiveness. Like that's inappropriate. You could just acknowledge nice looking and move along. So that's what I give him on. He's a nice looking guy. They're just so cute together. I don't know. Is he the first athlete to win? I just looked it up. He's the first NBA player to win. Congratulations to him. I saw a routine that he and his partner did to us, the movie. I think it was for the Halloween episode. They were dancing around in like red jumpsuits. And I was like, look at him on. All long and agile and flowy. And I was like, your wife's been working with you at home, hasn't she? You can't be married to a professional dancer and then, you know, embarrass yourself dancing. But he clearly did not embarrass himself because he won. He's very agile. He's a very long, agile man and with good rhythm. I expected the rhythm. I guess I should have expected the agility, too, because he's a basketball player. I guess black with rhythm and agility would make, you know, for a fine dancer. Well, good for him. What else is going on? I had to stop listening to the Adele album. Not because it's not a good album. Not because Adele doesn't sound wonderful. It's because Adele sounds, in most of the songs, some of them are okay. But Adele sounds like she's in so much pain that I just, I was like, I'm relating to this. And it's drawing out a past feeling of pain. Like I've been in the place that she's currently in. And by God's grace and the passage of time and therapy and walking around many cities and 10 countries in one year taking pictures of doors. I've sorted myself out, um, but like I remember the place that she's in and hearing someone still in it, it shows me how far I've come, but it also takes me back to that place and I just, I don't want to be there anymore. I feel like fully healed. It's been a few months since my dad was like, "Mm -mm, mm -mm, there's a little more, a little more. Like I think I've worked through the little more. I've been very deliberately working on myself. 
a couple of you heard me say last week that I was like, I was like, I'm not okay. And I haven't been for months. There's an assumption that anytime a woman is going through something, it must be involving like a man or a relationship. I promise you that I live a full life and there's more to my life than a man. The man situation is good. It was rocky for a week, but that was on me because I was acting like a fuck girl. The professional stuff is good. Good. Like I'm in a good place. I promise you, though, there's more to my life than just work and a man. And I hope that there's more to your life as well. Or if you don't date men, more to your life than just like your partner. Have a full life, folks. Yeah, but I'm not okay. And like I said, I haven't been in a really long time. And I'm working through some things. I'm not on the ledge. I'm just not okay right now. And I'm working through that. I do really need to sit my ass down somewhere. There's just not time to do that in this moment. I did tell you that I'm taking off for Thursday. So at least I have a week of a bit of a break. I've gotten a lot of the packing and shipping done for the orders that came in for the last couple days. I'm not packing shit on Thursday or Friday. I'm taking the day off like everyone else. Saturday, I'll get back on it. But I need a couple days because y'all know, like, if I get too stressed. Wait, do you think that this is somehow tied to, like, the allergy for wine? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. I know if I get too stressed out, my sciatica flares. Ain't nothing worth that. So I am going to sit down for a couple days because my upcoming schedule is nuts. And I might have to take another day or so off the podcast. I think my last podcast episode for the year is December 21st. I'm taking a full two weeks off, which is fair. I think I've only not done two episodes this year. And one of them was like for the housing crisis when I had to like move and then move back. And the other one was when I got sick after my COVID shot. So I've been like really consistent, but like I need a goddamn break between the podcast and like everything else. I just, I can't. So that's that. But I say all that to say, I had to stop listening to Adele because it was like making me sad. And I was just like, I don't really have anything to be sad about. Like I'm working through some things, but like, I'm not sad. I just, you know, am overwhelmed. And the expectations that are placed on me are just a lot. Like, I think we talked before how like, I don't really like being I don't know, in the public eye. And yet I keep doing it and I'm working through why I do that. And I don't like the answers. That's mostly what the issue is. So to counteract Adele, I started listening to like Raheem Devon and Trey songs, which I also can't relate to because, you know, the person I'm most interested in lives on the other side of the country. Just my life. The AMAs just happened. Full disclosure, I covered the AMAs for Essence, just for social media. I live tweeted the awards show. But to be quite honest, I was going to watch the AMAs anyway. I just probably wouldn't have tweeted it because Cardi was hosting. I told you that, right? Like, I was really excited that Cardi was hosting. And she did an amazing job. As soon as she walked out with, like, the big feather headdress, and not like feather headdress, like channeling Native Americans, kind of like Vegas showgirl hint of gladiator if that makes sense. But it was just beautiful. I was going to watch because I like Cardi. I love her personality. Um, But I also just wanted to see her fashions. Like I know she has like a ton of personality. So I didn't think it was going to be boring. But I also know that she can be like very extra and a little raunchy, which is part of the reason I like her. But I was like, how is that going to transfer to the AMAs with this very wide general market audience? But she did it. She pulled it off. And at one point I was like, Is she even on a teleprompter? Like, who wrote for her? Because it seemed like she was going off the dome, but I know that could not possibly be the case. But I was like, whoever wrote her scripts did really, really good. Shout out to the script writer. I thought the AMAs were really good. Chloe Bailey and her half-nakedness is starting to grow on me. She be half-naked, which, like, I don't think is necessary. But, you know, her body, her choice, this is what she wants to do at this time. Or her team wants her to do at this time. She's going along with it. But she's on every major award show. She's doing big late night performances. Is working for her. So she cute as she can be. I just want just a little more clothing. But I think that's like the, you know, auntie in me. She's young enough to be knee status. But again, we talked about that. And people always be like, if I had that body, I'd be half naked all the time. She has that body. And is half naked all the time. I mean, her and her little sister. She looks like a little angel. That little sister, Hallie. She has the face of an angel. She's a beautiful girl. Not to say that Chloe isn't. And she'd be walking around half naked too. A different kind of naked than Chloe. They have different shapes. So actually they could be wearing a similar dress, but it's going to look more demure on the sister who's less curvy. Curvy. And it's going to look more va-va-voom on Chloe because she has shape. I don't know. But I liked the performance the other night. 
You could tell she's giving 110%. Who else was on? Oh, I love that performance by Giveon. I had to go look up his name, y'all. Did I get it right? I get like this every time. I love his voice. His voice live is even better than the album. As rich as it is on the album, like there's an extra something to it live. I would totally go see him in concert. Like his voice is amazing. I had the anniversary song in my playlist already, but I went and downloaded like everything. And I made like a whole playlist on title because like I'm obsessed with him now. That voice, that voice. You know what I didn't like? Do I want to say this? I don't know if I want to say this. Do I feel like being nice today? No, I don't. So they had this segment that was really hyped called Battle of Boston. And it was new edition and new kids on the block performing together for the first time. So all the members of new edition, including Bobby and Johnny Gill, and then new kids on the block. They're both bands, obviously from Boston, hence Battle of Boston. By the way, both groups are touring together next year. So New Kids on the Block came out and I was never a New Kids on the Block fan. Like I knew who they were. I knew what the songs were because you couldn't miss them. They were everywhere. I didn't hate them. That just wasn't my vibe. When I got into like white bands, I went the Green Day Oasis route. Pop boy bands, white pop boy bands were just never my thing. New Kids on the Block comes out and they sound fine to me. They sound like they did. They looked good. Um, they looked good. Their core, their choreography was sharp. And I was like, okay, like new kids on the block. I didn't have any negative thoughts at all. Just, just very neutral, actually more positive thoughts. And then new edition came out. And before Ralph hit his opening note, I was like, yo, why they got them up here together like this? New edition comes out. They each have on trench coats in different colors. They got on black man hats. Not tilted, but just worn like black people wear them. We wear our hats slightly different. There's gold chains involved. And then there's just black man swag and energy, right? They doing their choreography. It's sharp. It's fancy. It's sexy. Like, it's all the things, right? It's intricate. And I was like, if I was new kids on the block, I'd be like, no, I'm not performing next to them. I'm not performing right before them. I'm not performing with them. I'm not performing after them. Put me at the top of the show. And then later, once you've seen a whole bunch of other stuff that's cleansed your palate, then you can put them. So people won't be able to see the direct juxtaposition of how great they are and what a terrible, horrible, soulless knockoff we are of them. I felt bad for new kids on the block. I mean, the audience was screaming and going crazy, but I was sitting there and I was like, oh my God, they look like the five horsemen. I was just like, what, what, is, what is this? What is this? And then someone pointed out to me and was like, yeah, like the same, I guess Maurice Starr, the same manager for New Edition, when New Edition got rid of him, he went and formed new kids on the block as a fuck you payback. Also, I didn't realize there's a new edition song and a, and a new kids on the block song that have the exact same melody. I can't remember what it was. They performed it and Ralph was singing and he sounded so good. And then the guy from new kids on the block, I can't name not near one of them. Right. He was like singing alongside Ralph. And I was like, sir, go home. You are interrupting a perfectly good song. And he doesn't have a bad voice. That's the thing. It's just like, you have no soul. And when you're singing next to someone with it, it's, it's, it's like unseasoned chicken. No, it was no. That's what it was. It was no. So I would be open to going to this new edition concert. Like, I really do want to see them. They looked good. Bobby looked good. Bobby sounded good. Bobby's choreography was good. Also, shout out to Johnny Gill. His voice is magic. But I was like, how am I going to go to this new kids on the block concert and new edition. I was like, I feel like that's a, a vastly different audience that they're expecting to show up. I don't really see the same like hardcore new kids on the block people showing up for new edition. Like it's two different generations. It's two different tastes in music. Also, who's headlining? I would go see new edition, but I'm gonna have to roll out before new kids on the block comes on. I'm sorry. Isn't new edition also supposed to be in Vegas? Like I vaguely remember talk of like a Vegas residency. Did I make that up? I hope not. Because Vegas is right there. You know I love to drive over to Vegas. It's a beautiful drive. It's like four hours. It's, it's the same thing. It's like D.C. to New York. It's, it's like 15 minutes longer, longer. But it's a beautiful drive. That desert drive. Ain't no cops. Wide open road. Honey, I was pushing that Jeep. I was doing like 85 and people were flying by me. And I was like, oh, I can't go any faster than this. I think the speed limit was like 75 though. So like I wasn't wilding. But still, that's all my AMA's goodness. Was there, was, there, was there other goodness at the AMAs? Oh, Silk Sonic. 
this bitch got me paying her rent. Look, the feminist in me wants to be so angry at the way they spit the word bitch. I want to be angry. The feminist in me wants to flare. But I told you, I got like feminist lips and ratchet hips. Like I just, ah, oh, I love that song. I love that song and I love that video. Like I just, <laughs> really, right? Really, right? If you paying somebody rent, and taking care of like all of their bills and their lifestyle. And you find out they're cheating on you. This bitch got me. Look, look, I ain't saying it's right. I don't like sexist language. But you know how sometimes I'd be calling people the N word and that's not good language either. But sometimes there's no other word that accurately describes the triflingness that is occurring. And you just have to use that word. And I use it indiscriminately. I use it for white people too. You've heard me do it. This bitch got me. <laughs> Yo, this is me without a drop of fucking wine. What am I going to do, y'all? I can't drink tequila every day. They said red wine once a day is good for your heart. My heart is so healthy. What am I going to do? My heart health is compromised now. Get ready for the ultimate cozy winter night in brought to you by Bean. Beam is a functional wellness brand that makes products to help you pursue your best and push boundaries of what's possible. For a limited time only, Beam's best-selling sleep product, Dream Powder Hot Cocoa, now comes in delicious white chocolate peppermint. Get ready. Swirls of peppermint mixed with creamy white chocolate for the guilt-free hot cocoa of your holiday dreams. It's the perfect winter wind down for those cold, snowy nights. It's triple lab tested and contains the ultimate sleep promoting ingredients, reishi, magnesium, ithionine, and melatonin, and no added sugar or artificial sweeteners. Curl up with a cup of white chocolate peppermint dream right before bedtime and get your best sleep ever. It usually takes me forever to fall asleep. And with dream powder, I'm knocked out right away. White chocolate peppermint dream powder only lasts for a limited time, so get it while it's hot. Great news. If you subscribe now, you can also take advantage of Beam's best sale of the year for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. You'll get 40% off the first three months of a peppermint dream subscription, plus a free mug and frother, or 20% off a one-time purchase. Again, this is Beam's biggest offer of the year. And just like this new flavor, it won't last long. Head to beamorganics.com slash ratchet. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash R-A-T-C-H-E-T for 40% off the first three months of a Peppermint Dream subscription, plus free mug and frother, or 20% off a one-time purchase. Pause or cancel anytime. Making content is an essential part of what I do to keep this show going, but it hasn't always been a seamless creative process. I'm good at speaking. I'm good at writing. I'm not so good at designing, but ever since I found Canva Pro, I can design anything like a pro and on any device. Canva Pro is a design platform that empowers you to create and share stunning content in just a few clicks. Designing with Canva Pro is amazingly fast and fun. Choose from thousands of templates that are easy to customize or start from scratch. Canva Pro has endless premium fonts, photos, videos, and so much more that add personality and edge to whatever you're designing. Now, what I love most is their extensive library of tools. They have so much variety, virtually endless options, and there's no more paying for images. Designing together has never been easier. Sharing, editing, and commenting in real time. Canva Pro helps you stay organized on the same page and on top of team projects. No more misplaced files and tedious back and forth. Plus, you and four teammates can unlock everything Canva Pro has to offer for just $12.99 a month. With Canva Pro's content planner, you'll save time planning, creating, and posting social media content too. Pause scheduled posts and edit them at any time. Now, my favorite Canva Pro feature is... Having all my files in one place, I love that I never have to search for anything ever again. Design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you use my promo code. 
Just go to canva.me slash ratchet to get your free 45 day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash ratchet. Canva.me slash ratchet. Last but not least. Oh no, I want to talk about this too. Okay, so remember like months ago, we talked about that Britney Spears documentary that the New York Times did, and it was about the free Britney movement because of the conservatorship that she'd been under forever and a day. There had been a free Britney movement going on for over a decade. The New York Times does this documentary. The free Britney movement gains momentum. Britney is now free of the conservatorship. I think she's like getting married and trying to have like another baby. Okay, do do your thing, Britney. That documentary detailed a lot of the sexism and unfairness that Britney Spears faced. One of the people that was focused on was Justin Timberlake. So people started to be like, yo, Justin, you're like a fucking douche. So many people started coming at him that Justin Timberlake publicly apologized for it. Then people started examining what other bullshit was Justin Timberlake involved in. There was another incident. You might remember it. It was at the Super Bowl where he reached over to Janet Jackson and grabbed off part of her her costume, and it exposed her breast. It wasn't even a second long that it aired. It caused a major firestorm. So a lot of people were like, well, you did Britney Spears. We should also examine the way that other women were treated in the 90s, including Janet Jackson at the hands of Justin Timberlake. Literally, at the hands. Because he's the one that grabbed a piece of clothing. So the New York Times has done just that. There's a documentary on Janet Jackson and the Super Bowl that's airing on Hulu right now. I was randomly looking for things to watch because you know how like I love a good documentary and it popped up and I was like, oh, what's this? Fascinating. It gave a lot of context to Janet Jackson that I didn't have or haven't really thought about because I want to say like when Control came out mid 1980s, I was a kid. I was like, what, six, seven? I didn't have the context of what Janet Jackson meant in the cultural sphere. And even coming of age with Janet Jackson, as she went from control and pleasure principle to like the more sexy side of herself. Like I remember Janet Jackson being very sexy in videos and half naked and the belly button and things like that. But it all just seemed normal to me because I was growing up with it and I didn't really know anything else. I wasn't aware of the culture shift and I wasn't in tune enough to pay attention to the personal shift. Like I was like, okay, like, you know, she used to dance in turtlenecks and now she's dancing in bras and okay, whatever. It's Janet Jackson. Cool. I recognize that she was a sex symbol, but like women being sex symbols and women being sexy wasn't foreign to me because I was growing up in an era where women being sexy, women, you know, with their boobs propped up and, you know, half dressed wasn't foreign. It was just, you know, what it was. I wasn't old enough or aware enough to recognize that a shift was occurring. So this documentary puts a lot of Janet Jackson in context. And one of the other things that I thought it did really well was point out how beloved Janet Jackson was culturally. She'd been on TV since she was like six. She was like this cute little chubby cheeked girl. She was on Good Times, which is like a hit show. She was um, the girlfriend on a different stroke. As a culture, like, and not just black culture, but American culture, people love Janet Jackson. Also watching this, I didn't realize how much Beyonce has like blatantly patterned her career after Janet Jackson. She often gets Tina Turner or Diana Ross comparisons. She's very much patterned herself after Janet Jackson, which is smart. Minus the Super Bowl incident. She had a different kind of Super Bowl incident. But I point that out to talk about how vast and how quickly America turned on Janet. Going into the Super Bowl, she was very much beloved Janet Jackson. Everybody loves Janet Jackson. Why else would she be hosting the Super Bowl? She relates to cause colors, creeds, age, demographics. Everyone loves Janet. And then they turned on her so quickly. I didn't understand the full context of how sharp the 180 was. I did recognize at the time that she was taking the brunt of the criticism for the Super Bowl incident. I don't think I had an understanding yet of misogyny, yes, sexism, yes, patriarchy, yes. At the time, I didn't fully wrap my head around how that applied to black women. I knew the concept of double marginalization, which is to not be white and to not be male in a society that centers white males. Like I got that concept, but not the myriad of ways that that plays out in culture or in interpersonal relationships even. 
I just, I just didn't. I was maybe, I was in my early 20s at the time. And I knew a lot of concepts, but they all hadn't like gelled together for me yet. And the conversations that we have now very casually about misogyny and sexism and patriarchy and all of those things, they happened in classrooms for me. It wasn't a general conversation like it is now, at least in my friend circles. And we didn't have... And we didn't have like a Facebook or a Twitter or an Instagram. We might have had MySpace back then, but MySpace wasn't really used for like deep connections, at least not in my world. Like I started my blog on MySpace. The first concept to me of someone who wasn't famous for, I don't know, writing a book or being on TV or having an album, but just regular people who were just living their lives and taking pictures, who were starting to become celebrities. That's what I remember from my space. But I say that to say like the conversations that we have now just didn't exist then. So my awareness wasn't what it was. Um, and even now that I like to think that I'm more aware, I just hadn't gone back to like think about certain incidences and the vast unfairness of them. I remember at the time thinking, why isn't Justin Timberlake standing with her? I felt like he abandoned her. It was especially when there was this thing, like I think everyone knew, or at least in entertainment, that Janet and Justin could only go to the Grammys if they issued an apology. And Janet wasn't going, and it was just like, well, Justin, you did it with her. Like, why aren't you standing with her? Why aren't you helping her? Why aren't you protecting her? And he was on some real, like, save self. But then also, like, it was just all this all this anger and vitriol was aimed at Janet Jackson, and I was like, she was the person who was exposed by someone else. Um, and that whole incident, like she was the passive person. Justin did the grabbing. She was grabbed. I don't understand how he did the grabbing, but he's getting away with it. And at the time I processed it as him being a man, I didn't fully process the all of the privilege of him being a white man and how that even overshadowed Janet Jackson with her vast wealth and bigger celebrity for probably longer than Justin Timberlake had even been alive. But this documentary just brings it full circle to the point that, it, that I was sitting there with my mouth open at one time. The long and heavy consequences that Janet Jackson paid for that Super Bowl incident, I didn't realize how much it cost her. And it's really, really sad because she didn't deserve that. But if you get a chance, please check that documentary out on Hulu. It's really, really good. Like I've explained a lot of it, but I haven't done it any sort of justice. There's so many details. Um, and they talk to a bunch of people, including people who produce the show, people in the NFL, to talk about the incident. They've never reached a conclusion about whether that was intentional. I don't think it was. Um, or whether it was a stunt gone wrong, something else was supposed to occur. But watch the documentary and let me know what you think. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn philosophy from Cornell West, hip-hop storytelling with Nas, or how to design your career with Elaine Welteroth. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. Now, I started taking master classes back in 2018. There was one with Aaron Sorkin about how to write for TV and another one with Shonda Rhimes. I loved those classes. I learned so much about how to write for TV. And my favorite part, there were no more than 15 minutes every class. I always had time to watch. This holiday, give one annual membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash ratchet today. That's masterclass.com slash ratchet. Terms apply. If you've ever dreamed of having the chance to win awesome prizes like a Tesla or karaoke with Charlize Theron or go to space with Virgin Galactic, then you have to check out Amaze, the new way to give back to charity and have fun doing it. Here's how Amaze works. You enter for the chance to win something amazing. And at the same time, you can donate to support great causes. It's a fun and easy way for nonprofits to raise money and for you to win big prizes like a multi-billion dollar house in Miami. Do you know the kinds of parties I would throw at a mansion in Miami? Here's how it works. Go to amaze.com slash ratchet and select the Miami dream house or a different experience of your choosing. Once you've selected your prize, choose a donation amount from 10 to $150. The more you donate, the more entries you'll get. 
through your donations, Omaze has raised more than $150 million to support over 350 nonprofits around the world. Omaze was named in Fast Company's 2020 Most Innovative Companies and featured on Good Morning America, The Today Show, and Stephen Colbert. Everyone deserves the chance to live their dreams. And with Omaze, extraordinary prizes are within reach for everyone. Enter today for your chance to win the Miami Dream House or other life-changing prizes and experiences at omaze.com slash ratchet. Plus, receive 20 extra entries when you enter code RATCHET20. That's O-M-A-Z-E dot com slash RATCHET. Whether it's taking a walk around your neighborhood, running errands, or venturing out on your own, you always want to feel safe. With Birdie, you can keep doing what you love with added peace of mind. Birdie is a personal safety alarm designed to be easy to carry and simple to use. When you activate your birdie with a quick pull, the alarm will emit a loud 130 decibel siren and flashing strobe light to help deter an attack. Now, what I love most is that unlike pepper spray or other deterrents, birdie is no danger to you. Feel confident to use it without the worry. Birdie goes wherever you do. The alarm comes in multiple colors and has a brass keychain so you can attach it to your keys or bag. Over 300,000 Birdie alarms have been sold, and they have thousands of five-star reviews. Join the flock today for a safer tomorrow. Right now, She's Birdie is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase when you go to she'sbirdie.com slash ratchet. Go to She's Birdie, spelled S-H-E-S-B-I-R-D, ie dot com slash ratchet for fifteen percent off your first purchase. That's she's birdie dot com slash ratchet. Last but not least, and very briefly, because we talked about Adele earlier, but I do want to mention this. I've been ranting and raving about the Adele album, like many people. Oh, did you see Plies? His old cute, pretty teeth, so and clean fingernails. His fingernails are like immaculate. I don't know why I noticed details like that, but he was on Instagram. He had a whole video singing his heart out to Adele, talking about be easy on me, singing his little heart out. And I was like, look, this album got everybody in their damn feelings. There is a young black woman on Instagram. You know, I'm gonna butcher her name and I don't even want to say her name because y'all talk about me so damn bad because I can't pronounce names. I want you to know that I went and looked. I can't find any interview with this woman where someone says her name so I could get it right. So if I butcher it, I want you to know it's not intentional and it's not for lack of research to try to get it right. Y'all treat me so goddamn bad over the names. Oh, y'all treat me bad. Y'all talk about me like a damn dog. Her Instagram name is Grace Boogie and her name as an artist, I want to say it's Diomora. X-I-O-M-A-R-A. I may have butchered it. If I did so, not my intent. Sorry, sis. But she has been documenting on her Instagram. Again, it's Grace Boogie. Grace, like for those who seek it, Boogie, B-O-O-G-I-E. So go look at her Instagram and you let me know what you think. But she is alleging with strong allegations and receipts that Adele stole, because there was no contact with her, the concept of an album she made. What's the name of this album? Called Sisters. In theory, this sounds crazy. This is a young woman. She's a singer. She's making independent music. She has about 7,500 followers on Instagram. So not like a big, big name. I've listened to her music and it's very good, but this is not an artist that I was familiar with. Unfortunately, I never heard of her work, which again is very good. But she alleges that Adele stole the concept of her album Sisters. She also says that at least one Adele song sounds almost identical to a song that she made. Adele has a song called Hold On. It's one of the songs she sang on the Oprah special. And then this woman, she has a song called Barbara that came out in July of this year. It sounds very, very similar in composition to Hold On. That alone could be a coincidence. This young woman also has a music video. It's called That Old Alarm. It's shot in black and white. She's sitting at a piano. Um, She's carrying a suitcase in the video. She did some shot by shot comparisons of her video and Adele's video. For Be Easy On Me, it's more than coincidence. And then for the album concept, she posts the track list of Adele's album 
and she posts the songs from that album that are nearly identical in either subject matter or even title to her own album. So this woman had a song called Easy. Adele has a song called Easy On Me. Adele has a song called My Little One. This woman has a song called Little Angel. And again, this is all from one album. This is all from one album that this woman created. Adele has a song called Oh My God. This woman has a song called Mary New Religion. Adele has a song called Can I Get It? This woman has a song called Don't You Like It? Adele has a song, it's one of my favorites, called I Drink Wine. This woman has a song called Chardonnay. Adele has a song called To Be Loved. This woman has a song called Believe in Love. That's more than just a coincidence, y'all. It's starting to sound real McDonald's McDowell's. You tell me there's something from one song that sounds like your song, even though that's like really similar, I'll give you possibility of coincidence. It's not the same chords. It's similar, but it's not the same. That's possible. But like a song that's almost identical, a track list of songs from one of your albums that sounds almost identical where half of the titles and song concepts are nearly identical and a video with several of the same shots, that's more than coincidence. I want you to go to this young woman's page and I want you to look at the receipts and tell me what you think. I'm a huge Adele fan. When someone sent me the link to this woman's page and what she was alleging, I was like, who, what? I didn't want to believe it. And then I listened to it and I was like, ooh, yeah. Mm -mm. So you go to the page and let me know what you think. I think, I think that Adele need to cut this woman a check. And I don't understand why they wouldn't on the front end. Like if you saw this woman's work and you were very inspired by it and you wanted to create a concept album based on it, why not just collaborate with her? Or even, even this, if you're not going to collaborate with the woman and cut her a check, and she probably wasn't going to cost that much in the grand scheme of like, you know, Adele type money. Or, or, and I'm always for, you know, cut the check, especially when it comes to black women. But if you didn't want to cut the chick a check, really, when Adele was doing these interviews, she could have just said, I was listening to this artist named XYZ, and I was so inspired by her work. That shout out alone would have got this woman so much attention and so much sales. People would have started streaming her work, buying her work. Record companies would have started paying attention to her. That could have done wonders for her career. And really, I think that's all that this woman wants. She wants to be acknowledged. She doesn't want to feel like someone has taken her work and swallowed her whole. And clearly it's good work because you were inspired by it. You ripped off a bunch of it and it's making you mega, mega millions. This woman could have money and fanfare too if she had your positioning and your opportunities. Really what she needed was an alley-oop and a check too, especially at this point. I can't even imagine how she feels as an artist. I mean, actually I can. I've had people like lift entire essays that I've written and put their name on them. And it was just stuff that was circulating around social media, but I felt so violated. Like people use my quotes all the time and give me no attribution. Which is one of the reasons when I read to you from various articles, I always make a point to say, like, this is from Rolling Stone. This is from the New York Times. This is from The Root. This is from The Grio. I always want to give attribution because I know what it's like to not even receive any. And you don't even need to call me by name. If you want to say I read something in Essence or I read something on The Root or I read something in The New York Times, that's fine. But just acknowledge that my work ain't your work. That's all I want. And I really feel like if Adele's team had gone to this woman on the front end and said, we're very inspired by your work, like Adele loves you. How can we collaborate? How can we like, you know, bring you into our process or something like that? This woman probably would have gladly jumped on board. Why not just do that? It's so much easier than, I mean, I would guess the lawsuit that's about to come out of this. I don't know how much merit it has, but I know it's going to be a damn headache that nobody wants to deal with, which they wouldn't have if somebody cut the damn check on the front end. Speaking of cut the check, there are cut the check t-shirts available on the website. This story just happens to coincide. One of the reasons that there's a merch called cut the check is so often people do not. And the cutting of the check solves a whole lot of problems. Whole lot of problems go away when the check is cut. I could tell you a cut the check story about shit I won't shut up about. Had the check been cut, I'd have a lot less to say. We'll talk about that another day, another time. Oh, it's been fun, y'all. I want to talk next week, not on Thursday, but next week when we're back. There was a little story on the Grio. My friend Biba Adams wrote it. You see how easy it was for that to roll off the tongue to give attribution? 
Yes. Bieber wrote this nice little story about um, one of the actors from The Wire. And he had sued a woman for sexual abuse. It turned out the abuse that he alleged was the woman had grabbed his ass on two separate occasions. The woman was also, at the time, the woman was his assistant and they were in some sort of situationship where they were exchanging flirty texts and sexual innuendo. They were traveling together. So I'm making the assumption that there was a sexual relationship. I could be wrong. There's a lot that goes into this story and it's very, very messy. So I want to take the time to go through the details, but we don't have that time today. And again, this is a story in the griot, a legitimate news site. All of the details are backed up by court documents and the griot actually spoke to the woman who was charged with sexual abuse. I want to say she spent like 30 some odd hours at a police station in Brooklyn. She was arrested because of it. And she says that it was in retaliation because she had been doing some work for him as a friend, girlfriend, someone he's dating. You know how like we just like to help out and sort of level up the men in our lives sometimes? You know, sometimes we play assistant and sometimes we're running errands. We're just trying to like make their lives better because like we care and we love them, you know? But it seems she was doing a lot of that. To the point that it was interfering with her own work and she was functioning as a full-time assistant, but, but she wasn't getting no check. And so she said when she asked him for a check and was like, hey, babe, you know, I'm doing all this and you're making money doing this and I'm functioning as the assistant that you also just fired so that I could take over. But you're not running me to check that you was running the person before me. So there was a dispute about the money. And then he charged her with sexual abuse and retaliation. That's what she says. That's what she says. So I told you it was messy. We'll get into the details of it next week. Until then, have an awesome Thanksgiving. I hope you stuff your faces and then go to the gym the next day. If you're like me, you may have put on a little weight for COVID. I was doing so well until like two and a half months ago and I just all caught up with me. So I'm trying to get it off now. I've been eating right. I've been exercising. It's starting to come off. I guess it'll come off faster because I can't have no damn wine. <sighs> what is life? Ugh. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll talk again next week. If you don't have your merch, I told you to go at the beginning of this episode. I don't know what's left. Please go to the website, DemetriaLLucas.com. Our winter merch that was supposed to take us through January is lasting, what, like 72 hours? First world problems, good problems. But what are we going to do for the rest of the season, y'all? We'll figure that part out, too. All right. That's not everything, but that's enough. Okay. Bye. Every human was born to create. Whether you last picked up a paintbrush yesterday or in grade school, you can explore your creativity and be inspired. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning, with so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives. Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Now, we've often talked about my procrastination issues. I've started taking a Skillshare class. Productivity for Creatives. Build a system that brings out your best with Thomas Frank. Whether you're a dabbler or a pro, a hobbyist or a master, you are creative. Discover what you can make with classes for every skill level. You'll experience real improvement with hands-on projects and classes designed for real life. Also, Skillshare is incredibly affordable, especially when it comes to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash Ratchet and get a one month free trial of premium membership. That's one month of premium membership at Skillshare.com slash Ratchet.